Hello everyone, this video is about dynamic attributes. Normally, we declare attributes to have property persistence. In this code example, you see all of the attributes ID, level, trainer title, start year. All of them have the persistence type specified as property. These attributes are hence persisted or stored in the database using standard mappings and automatic conversions. If we examine the model classes, the attributes getter and setter methods are auto-generated with no custom logic. But when we need the attributes value to be computed or derived at runtime and for the persistence layer to not handle it, we must specify the persistence type as dynamic. By doing so, automatic persistence in the database does not happen. Instead, we need to specify an attribute handler which references the ID of a specific spring bean. This handler beans class must implement the Java interface dynamic attribute handler. Let's check the dynamic attribute example here. The attribute years of experience has its persistence type specified as dynamic. This setting requires us to specify an attribute handler, which we specify as the spring bean trainer default years of experience handler, whose implementation class provides custom logic for handling the attribute value. Let us look at the steps of implementing a dynamic attribute handler implementation class. First of all, the class is required to implement the dynamic attribute handler Java interface. This interface allows us to specify two Java generic types. Value refers to the declared type of the dynamic attribute, whereas model is the enclosing type containing the dynamic attribute. The interface also forces our implementation class to implement two methods. The get method returns the calculated value of the dynamic attribute, whereas the set method takes an incoming value to be used for applying a new value to the dynamic attribute. For both methods, the model object parameter provides access to all the other attributes of the enclosing item on which the value calculation is based. Let's check out an example here. In backoffers, I'll go to types and search for trainer. Then click on it to open it in the editor pane. In the editor pane, I'll click on the search by type icon. In the result list pane, which displays all trainer items, I can create a new trainer. Because no back office configuration was provided for this new type, its create wizard is not configured to prompt for the newly declared attributes, only the attributes inherited from its parent type. I'll have to just click on finish, then provide the trainer object's other values afterwards. For the new trainer object, I'll provide a trainer ID and set the trainer level to 10. I'll set the default English trainer title and expand the localized attribute values icon and just for fun, also provide a title value for Hindi. Lastly, I'll set start year to 2013. Let's check the years of experience attribute next. It is defined to be a dynamic attribute with the attribute modifier right set to false, making it a read-only attribute. This means there will be no setter generated for the model class as the value is not meant to be specified explicitly. This is done on purpose so that its value is always calculated but not stored. The calculation logic is contained in the attribute handler spring bean here, so let's take a look at its Java implementation class. We see that the handler class implements the dynamic attribute handler interface mentioned earlier with the get method taking the enclosing trainer model object as parameter. Then, based on a trainer's start year and the current year, a calculated years of experience value is returned. As you see, we have integer as the return type which must correspond with this dynamic attributes declared type. Let me change the start year to 2015 and hit save. The value of the years of experience is recalculated accordingly as backoffice rereads the attributes from the underlying object. After we finish implementing our attribute handler class, don't forget to register an instance of this class as a spring bean with the correct bean ID as you should have noticed in our demo code. Let's look at an example of implementing a localized dynamic attribute, which is slightly different from normal dynamic attributes. The XML declaration is almost the same as before, except that a localized attributes type is prefixed with localized. Here it is, localized Java Lang string. The reference to the handler spring bean looks the same as before. The difference, however, lies in the implementation of the handler class, as now the class must implement the dynamic localized attribute handler interface. 
Here, we must implement two GET methods having different signatures, which utilize the internationalization service. One method assumes the default locale, whereas the other allows the locale to be specified. We recommend some best practices concerning dynamic attributes. First, we need to pay attention to naming conventions. Here the recommended format starts with the type name, followed by a descriptor for the implementation class, default as it is the first standard implementation, then the attribute name, and finally the word handler. You might have noticed that in our earlier demo code, we defined a class named trainer default years of experience handler. Furthermore, it is recommended to set the ID of the bean instance to match the name of the handler class, except with an initial lowercase letter. Another best practice is to avoid redundant calls of the dynamic attributes get and set methods. This is also a standard Java best practice. Here, instead of calling the handler's get methods, Inside the for loop, move it outside, call it once, then use only the return value inside. This approach minimizes overhead. Yet another best practice addresses how to handle complex logic. If your custom logic is very complicated, placing it in the handler's get method forces the overhead of this complex logic to be unavoidable. Instead, encapsulate this complex logic into a new custom service method, which can be judiciously invoked or bypassed. As you can see in the green code, the complicated logic has been migrated to a service class method. This is preferable to the red code below, which implements the complicated logic inside the get method of the dynamic attribute handler class, thus making it impossible to circumvent. The next best practice concerns the proper way to implement read-only dynamic attributes. Here we set the attributes write modifier to false. This prevents a setter method from being auto-generated in this type's model class. But our handle class is still required to have a set method because of implementing the interface. Therefore, this set method should be non-functional and be treated as incorrect to call. The proper way to accomplish this is to have this method do nothing and throw an unsupported operation exception in case it is somehow called. Conversely, it is possible to define a write-only dynamic attribute. But why would we even want a write-only dynamic attribute? To improve your API. Example given, to make coordinated changes in related attributes. When one attribute is changing, which would otherwise be cumbersome or error-prone. In our previous example, we would have to manage these two fields independently in the absence of a read-only dynamic attribute. You can observe that when the start year attribute is modified, the read-only years of experience attribute is updated accordingly, eliminating the possibility of errors. Our final best practice involves properly implementing write-only dynamic attributes. Here, we can see that the attribute declaration's read modifier is set to false. Our handler's get method should also throw an unsupported operation exception. But again, why would we even want to define write-only dynamic attributes? Let me show you another example of how this could be useful. In this trainer object, we have these two boolean attributes, show level and show title. The dynamic attribute display text derives its value from trainer title and level, depending on whether or not the booleans show title and show level are true. We can set show level and show title individually to true, as in this example in the HAC scripting languages console. After verifying the changes in back office, display text derives a corresponding value. Alternately, a write only dynamic attribute can be defined to allow us to modify these booleans as a group. We can define the write only dynamic attribute, disable all showing. Here, the modifier read is set to false while write is set to true. Of course, our handler implements the set method accordingly and has a get method that throws an unsupported operation exception. Let me set this attribute as false here and execute the script. We can check the handler implementation here. As you see, set takes the inverse of the parameter value, false in our script's example, and assigns it to both show level and show title. Hence, they will be set to true. So again, back to the original question, why would we want write-only dynamic attributes? 
In our example, we only had a group of two attributes, but what if it was a lot more? The whole group could be set via a single method call. Secondly, we can also add our own custom logic into a model class. As you know, model classes in the SAP Commerce Cloud are only generated automatically via items XML. Hence, no custom logic can be implemented. However, with write-only dynamic attributes and their corresponding set methods, this becomes possible. Those are some essentials about how to define and implement dynamic attributes. Thanks for watching.